Wagons are cooler than SUVs, that's just a fact. But if you want a cool looking wagon, one that doesn't look like you've just given up on life, you usually have to spend a lot of money for the likes of a C63 estate or going up even to the ludicrous Audi RS6 estate. But Genesis has a solution for you and they brought something out that looks like a rolling concept car for less than $100,000. This is the 2022 Genesis G70 shooting brake and I'm gonna walk you around the outside features, the inside features and take it for a drive to let you know if this thing drives as good as it looks. And so with all that said, my name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars, let's get into it. Now there's only one flavor of Genesis G70 shooting brake coming to Australia and it's the two liter engine option. The 3.3 liter V6 is reserved only for the G70 sedan. So that means pricing for this model is 79,900 before on roads. This one has a few packs on it, but as the ground floor entry level into the shooting brake G70 range, it's 79,000. 900. Now this car is a gorgeous car in my opinion. Uh, other people might think this is a little bit gaudy, but I think this looks fantastic. And it's because it has a few features around the exterior that adds to that. First of all, it's the sculpted bonnet that goes into this wing badge, which looks like it's creating a wake effect over the actual metal work, which looks really cool. You have a really cool angular grille as well with this texture design for the actual radiator and even some more venting down below and some more vents along the side. I I especially love the LED lights which are split and integrated into the actual bodywork and they just look like something that's rolled off the concept garden out at Monterey Car Week. Now anyone who knows anything about specking a car in 2022 knows that dark green bronze accenting and a tan interior are in and this car has two of those things bar a tan interior. I completely melted when I saw this thing was dark green. This is an awesome spec. Add in the fact you've got bronze accenting around the windows and at the grill, it just really ties this exterior look all together. Add in some 19 inch alloy wheels, which have Brembo brakes on the inside, hinting at this car's performance. And you have an exterior that looks really, really quite good. There's a side vent down the bottom here, but really the party piece is the fact that this isn't a sedan and it's a shooting brake shape. Uh, Genesis would call it a shooting brake because Mercedes is doing it and a shooting brake is meant to just have two doors because it goes back to the fact that you could put guns in the back and all that sort of stuff. This is technically a wagon, but wagon sounds lame. So they've gone ahead with the shooting brake name. Add in the fact as well, this doesn't have a long roof. It sort of tapers off before the end of the boot. So that is sort of what a modern shooting brake is that you get this sort of swooping roof line, but it's still a wagon shape. I think this thing looks incredible. It really is quite quite a good looking car and it turns a lot of heads because this is just such an unusual shape, but it's one that's really attractive to the eye. So I really think this side profile does this car a whole lot of justice for what this thing is trying to achieve. Now to finish off this incredible design, we have some cool features back here. We have a large real rear wing, which looks quite cool. And we have some glass that runs underneath it. And obviously the rear glass at the back. We do have a rear wiper, which I wish was integrated into the back here, but nonetheless, it's quite useful, but it would have made for a very clean design. There's Genesis spelt along the back. You have your designation for what sort of engine you got under the bonnet. And then we've also got these interesting tail lights. They do have quite a large break between the ones that sit on the actual boot lid and the ones that actually wrap around the body of the car. I wish these were just a tiny bit closer together, but it's distinct nonetheless. And then yes, you can see these very real exhaust pipes and you might think they might sound really cool because they're really well designed and yes, actually quite real, but they are a little disappointing in their sound. So here's what they sound like. Now the G70's interior is very impressive. This one with its extra options is quite luxurious. First of all, the materials, we have quilted leather on the doors, we have nice leather seats stitching everywhere, and we have a suede headliner, which just makes this thing on first glance quite luxurious. I also love how everything comes towards you when you step into the car, so the steering wheel adjusts and the seat moves forward. It just feels like a car that's looking after you. Now this interior actually isn't any different from the G70 sedan apart from the boot. So what you're seeing here is what you get in the sedan and it's actually quite a fine interior. I will add that yes, despite it having a digital driver's display and a nice large center screen, it is feeling a little bit behind what Audi and Mercedes are doing with their latest cars. So I would only predict that an update would be coming with a revised interior, but this interior still is a luxurious one at that. There are nice large buttons to access the multimedia controls and 
climate controls, so there's no issues with navigating everything that's on the screen. Although, actually touching the screen, if you have shorter arms, it's gonna feel like a bit of a reach because it's so far up on the dashboard, but it does mean it's great for visibility. We have an upgraded Lexicon speaker system, which sounds quite good, and you can adjust what that sounds like with some simple presets, like putting your music that sounds like it's on a stage, sounds like you're in an audience, or just like a reference studio sound. I also love the shifter design. It's nice and easy and quick to you know, change gears. There's nothing complicated about it, and I especially love right at your fingertips, you have your drive modes and your other controls for this car, which means you don't have to do any searching or menu diving to get to some simple control. Now, the steering wheel feels nice in the hand. It's a good size. I don't particularly love the center material here but nonetheless it looks quite premium and the fact that your paddle shifters up here are quite useful rather than just relying on the center shifter for when you want to change your own gears and trust me you do in this car now the seat has plenty of adjustability we have leg supports we also have a pretty complicated bit of bolstering support on the sides and in your lower back which is great and it's also very easy to adjust there's also a heads-up display and there is a 3d effect for the driver's instrument display which is quite cool there is a giant wireless charging pad here, but I think it's a little bit too big. My phone did move around a bit, so it didn't really charge consistently all the time. It kept on turning on and off because it kept moving around on this actual wireless charging pad, but nonetheless, it's nice to have. Now, despite this being a wagon, the rear seat room is a little tight. And that was something that was very obvious in the G70 sedan because of that roof line coming down quite quickly. So you really had a restricted amount of headroom and also the fact that it felt like a smaller car. I feel like with the extended roof here, it feels like I've got more space back here, and I feel a lot more comfortable than I did in the G70 sedan. But overall, it is a limited amount of space. My shoes don't fit under the seat in front of me. There are some cutouts in the front seat to allow for a bit more leg room, but my knees are sitting quite above the seats that are actually quite comfortable, but my knees are floating above them. There is a USB in the back, which is quite good, and there are some vents back here, and there are controls on the front left passenger seat, so you can move that forward if you want to create more room for yourself in the back. I do like the amount of quilted leather back here, but although there is a middle seat, there is a giant transmission and exhaust tunnel, which means that your feet, if you're going to sit there, aren't going to sit on it at all. They're going to sit either side and take up the already limited amount of room that the other passengers have. And the outer seats also get three-way adjustable heated seats, which is quite nice. Now, squeezing out of the back, we're gonna see why you would buy this over the sedan, and that's because of this boot. You get over 100 liters extra space than you do compared to the sedan. So it's 465 liters with all the seats up. You can fold the seats in a 40-20-40 split. You can fold the seats using some latches in the back, but they don't actually launch the seat forward. You can use them to release and then push the seat forward. So that's just something that's a little bit annoying, but at least they're 40-20-40 split, so you can make the most of this interior, and it means you can fold down that middle seat just for longer bits of cargo to go through. There's also a cargo net back here which secures all your loose items as well as some smaller little cargo nets which are quite useful and there's also some shelving here which you can take out which helps keep prying eyes away from what's in the back here. And to top it all off there is a space saver spare underneath the boot floor. But I want to see if this added weight and added design really affects how this thing drives because the G70 sedan I drove was quite a good performer but let's see if that's true for this car. Okay, we're in Sports Plus, and we're gonna test the 0 to 100 time in this car. It's claimed 7.6 seconds to 100. Let's see how we go. In three, two, one. Seven point eight seconds is what we tested here. So it's a little bit hard to launch this as quickly as an all-wheel drive car, and that four-cylinder isn't as responsive as that V6. So look, that 7.6 second claim not to 100, I'm sure you can easily beat it, but in this instance, we found it just a little bit hard to match on a straight bit of road. So we have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged petrol motor under the bonnet producing 179 kilowatts and 353 newton meters of torque, all being sent to the rear wheels via a ZF source eight speed transmission. Now the elephant in the room is that this needs the V6. And look, you're not wrong if you're sourcing complete all out speed and performance, but I wanna show you why the four cylinder actually isn't as bad as it seems, despite it being quite a little bit less powerful than the twin turbo v6 option now 
you can hear that's not actually the engine sound, that's the enhanced engine sound coming through the speakers. It's actually quite quiet if you don't have it on, so I like having it on so I can hear the gears a bit better because it matches the revs. Um, but you can turn it off completely if that's really annoying. It's not exactly the most real sounding uh, engine sound. I have a lot of passengers in here wondering if that's actually the real sound and it's not, unlike the BRZ, which makes it sound a little bit more, I don't know, realistic. This sounds quite meaty and artificial compared to what's actually under the bonnet. Now, the whole point of the G70 is its chassis setup and it's really impressive. You've got a ton of strut bracing underneath the bonnet. We obviously have rear-wheel drive. We have a smaller wheelbase with rear-wheel drive going through this car. Now the chassis setup of the G70 is quite impressive. I was really taken away by how well and nimble the sedan was. So I wanted to see how that added weight at the back helps or maybe worsens this car's ride. And from what I can tell right now, it does not affect it in the slightest. It's quite planted on the road. It feels like a wide car, despite it feeling smaller in proportions compared to say some other station wagons. It feels nimble on its feet as well. And I've got a really good amount of steering feel. And that's all because we have a couple of drive modes here. We have Eco, which is pretty you know, good to use around town. It's actually one of the best Eco modes I've used, so I'm really impressed with it. We have Comfort, which is for you know enhanced sort of performance, but also allows you to drive around town quite comfortably, as the mode suggests. And then what we're in now is we're in Sport, and we have Sport Plus. And there's a custom mode in there as well, but I'm just gonna hang in Sport and Sport Plus today. We have this sport mode which sharpens up the steering, gets the gears going a little bit quicker and I can tell you that this gearbox is absolutely cracking and everyone knows ZF makes great gearboxes but here if I shift down a couple of gears and go and accelerate the car's banging through those gears, they don't seem as obvious on screen but what you're feeling is just a little bit more engagement through this gearbox so it sort of just like surges the car a little bit forward and it's quite a fun experience driving this thing. Now going through, I know exactly where my wheels are. I feel like I've got enough road feel here and then we're sort of jumping through these corners. Very nice. I do feel like the suspension in here is still a little bit soft uh, because the primary purpose of this car is not to be an all out performance car. That would be uh, something I'd expect to wear the V6 under the bonnet. But I'm finding this longitudinally placed four cylinder to provide plenty of driving thrills. We have a big turbocharger under there and I can definitely feel that working away. Now that differential at the back is a little bit noisy at low speeds. When you're parking, it sounds like a little whir happening in the background. But once you're up and going, you can't hear it. Uh, I've heard it a bit more on the G70 sedan than I hear it here, so it's pretty good. And it's actually a really impressive uh, differential. It allows for a decent amount of play in the back wheels when you want to. So I can go into Sport Plus and it turns off trash control. And we can go through some faster corners here to sort of feel how this chassis and rear wheel drive setup performs. So we can go through here, feed on the power like nice and early, and we feel that back sort of bumping around, but I feel like we've got plenty of grip. and. I feel like we've got complete control of this car. It doesn't feel like it's wafting or leaning too much, although I do feel like it's sort of skirting along on those shocks just a little too much. So if I was to tune this for more of a performance setup, I would be looking at coilovers and then maybe some bolt-on mods and you probably would have a very potent four-cylinder G70 shooting brake that'd be great for a bit more performance. That 0 to 100 times 7.6 seconds isn't exactly that impressive, but to be honest, when you're driving, it feels a lot faster than that. And I really like how this thing hoons along, and for a wagon, it's so much fun. It really, really does perform in the handling department and feeds enough power here that I don't feel like I'm really lusting for that much more to make this feel like a car that matches its looks with its performance. It is a lot of fun to drive. Now look, this isn't the fastest wagon you can get, and it's not the most spacious wagon you can get. If you're looking for those two, you're either going to have to spend more money or go for something a little less dramatic than this. But if you like the style, like the features it's got and see this is a pretty practical option for someone like yourself or you just like the design then I can say there are some pretty strong points for this car because it doesn't have the v6 it's a little bit lighter and also a little bit better on fuel and you still have that rear-wheel drive setup and a very capable chassis and it means you don't have to go spend above hundred thousand dollars for a driver focused equivalent German station wagon from the likes of Mercedes or Audi I really think this car does a very good job of being a luxury daily driver and something that 
that if you see some curvy roads on your road trip, you can go ahead and the Sport and Sport Plus and really carve them up and have a fun time. And if you really want a bit more performance, you could put some bolt-on parts onto this and maybe a flash tune, but I'm not recommending that, but that's something you could explore. Yes, of course, this would be extra special if it had the V6 twin turbocharged power plant under the bonnet, but as it stands, this is still a very good wagon for people looking for a bit of style and a bit of driving dynamics. And please, if you get this car, spec it just as you see here, but with a tan interior. That would just be the mm, best spec you could get. And with that out of the way, my name's Cameron. This is Product Review Cars. I'll see you in the next one.